Okay, so this is something I've been working at with Leonardo and Matthew for quite a while now. And uh, the issue here at stake uh, is how the internet has changed uh, our political opinions. Or basically we ask whether or not the internet that has penetrated our lives, our everyday lives in, in such um, an important way, uh, as also the potential of playing a role in determining our political opinions. And uh, particularly, we were interested in understanding whether or not uh, browsing the internet for politically relevant news uh, had the potential of playing a role in determining uh, political opinions on the European Union. And we were lucky enough to have uh, a good data set that uh, allowed us to check for um, such an answer in times of crisis. And we thought that that would have been uh, a particularly interesting case. Um, and as I said, the internet has changed our lives in, in so many ways. And we've been talking about VAAs and uh, we have this intuition that uh, the internet has the potential of being particularly important for uh, the formation of political opinion. Uh, but there's very little research being done addressing this very question. Um, and particularly when it comes to the European Union, uh, which is a subject that in a lot of ways is, is so unrelated uh, to our um, experience, uh, we believe that mass-mediated information is particularly in, in, important and being the internet such uh, a complex phenomenon, um, it, it's, it's interesting to explore it a little bit more. Um, and as I said, in a way it's, it's, it's exciting to study something that uh, hasn't been studied before, uh, but it creates a number of uh, problems when, when building the theory. Uh, around it, and, and I'll, I'll come in a second to what were uh, our theoretical expectations and, and how we came to formulate them. Um, the way we go about this in, in uh, empirical terms is by making use of observational data. Uh, and again, we were lucky enough to have uh, two good data sets that allowed us to mimic the dynamics of uh, a laboratory experiment. Um, by uh, approaching the issues uh, with uh, instrumental variables. And uh, the context uh, we uh, choose to, to empirically test our hypothesis uh, is the Republic of Ireland, and there are two sets of reasons uh, for choosing Ireland. One of them is, again, uh, related to uh, the, the, the availability of, of good data that allowed to implement the, the research design we had in mind. But we also think that there are uh, good reasons to look at Ireland, that there are substantial reasons to take Ireland as a good uh, case study uh, to test our theory. And the first set of reasons has to do with how uh, strongly Ireland has been impacted by the economic crisis. Uh, just to give you a few facts uh, about um, Ireland and, and how uh, important we would have imagined the effects of the crisis uh, would have been there. Uh, Ireland uh, had, had an incredibly uh, quick and um, overwhelming a period of economic growth from the mid-1990s to late 2008. And then there was the skyfall. Uh, with, uh, with the property bubble and uh, Anglo-Irish Bank uh, asking for uh, a bailout to the Irish government, which was granted in, in symbolic uh, circumstances overnight, uh, only to realize that the, the Irish government wasn't in fact able uh, to cover for what it had promised to the banks. Uh, and a, a few months later, uh, the government, which uh, at the time uh, started becoming incredibly unpopular uh, and actually to us the, the financial support of the EU, the ECB and the IMF. Uh, therefore, there was the, the uh, bailout of the Irish exchequer uh, by these three institutions uh, that imposed strong fiscal conditionality on the country 
uh, austerity measures. So that, that's really a context where we would imagine the crisis uh, would uh, show some effects in public opinion. And we know that there were effects, and those were tangible uh, in, in terms of uh, national politics. The uh, incumbent government, the coalition was at the time formed by Fianna Fáil and the Green Party, uh, first became hugely unpopular, uh, and then was eventually uh, um, forced to, to call an emergency election in February 20, in January 2011 for the following month. Uh, and the election, the election was uh, extremely volatile, the incumbent government was overthrown. Um, and at the same time, we observed effects uh, that had to do with, uh, uh, with the level of popularity of the European Union as such. Ireland is a country with a, a really strong tradition of um, Europhiliac sentiment, um, the uh, percentage of the population that has declared uh, the membership of the Union is a good thing uh, has always been extremely high from the 80s on. Uh, and for the first time, we observed uh, an almost 10% uh, drop in uh, amount of people that thought the uh, membership of the European Union uh, was a good thing for the country. The second reason why Ireland is a particularly interesting case is because it's the only uh, EU member state where a popular vote um, was actually organized and intended at confronting uh, a policy measure that was designed to deal with the crisis. So the, the Irish Fiscal Compact referendum of the 31st of May 2012 was the only popular vote, was the only referendum on a measure that the European Union had actually uh, taught in order to deal with the crisis. And in, in such a way, for us, uh, it, it represented an extraordinary occasion to have a, a behavioral comp com complement to our uh, analysis that was uh, by then only based on, on attitudes and opinions. And we were able to uh, insert a couple of questions on this uh, survey that was, uh, that was um, run uh, in the immediate aftermath of the, of the referendum. So when it, when, as I said, when it comes to formulating theories on um, an unexplored territory, um, we couldn't really rely on any previous piece of work being done on the internet, but we could rely on a relatively large body of literature that had explored what are the effects of media visibility uh, of the European Union in terms of turnout, in terms of understanding of how the Union works, in terms of uh, approval. And we know from this literature that uh, as media start paying more attention to uh, the European Union, European policies and politics, uh, people tend to learn more. Uh, and when it comes to elections, especially in the run-up to EP elections, uh, it has been observed that the more prominently the EU features in the media, the more likely are people to turn out uh, and then vote. Uh, and that's because, again, we really don't have this, this um, sense of the presence of the Union in, in, in our everyday life. Dalton and Duval put it uh, in, in a very straightforward way very few citizens as a first or even second hand contact with the community of affairs in Brussels. It's something that is up there in the air, but uh, we, don't, we don't quite understand it and we, we don't quite know how to go about evaluating the union. Now, that's, that was one set of, of um, um, literature and, and findings we could, uh, we could uh, rely on and we would have a you know, in theory expected that also visibility, uh, also being able to access information via another media would increment uh, our likelihoods of you know, uh, having a better cognitive understanding of the union. But the internet is, is very, diverse, it's very diverse in nature and in a lot of ways is very different from traditional media. Now we can't really uh, decide what is gonna be uh, read in the evening news, and 
when we read a newspaper, we are confined to what we found between the last and the, the first and the last page of the paper. On the internet, we don't really have this, these constraints. We can just jump from one website to the other. We can access a very large amount of information in a very short amount of time. Um, so the hyperlinking structure of the internet is, is per se completely different from what we knew before. On the other hand, if we can, let's say, um, access all this uh, diverse uh, information, we are also very much in control of what we can and, and what we want to search for, what we want to be exposed to. Uh, we don't have to go through the entire uh, um, set of things that don't interest us. When we search for something, we, we tend to go straight away to what uh, we are inclined to see and we are willing to see. Therefore, we can uh, put it in terms of uh, selective exposure and, and the internet itself, by, by design, maximizes um, potential for selective exposure. If I'm a left-leaning voter, I will go and access information that is, uh, in, on, is in line with my preferences, and I, I, I wouldn't have to go through informations that come from different, um, different parties that, that I can just decide don't interest me. Uh, therefore, again, there are all these uh, considerations to be made. It is true that the information could be more diverse, but it's also true that people can just decide not to make use of that and, and go straight to what they think is already in line with their preferences. Um, and we, we thought that uh, to make of this one of our working hypotheses. And therefore, we, we came up with two hypotheses. One, the first one is, is very straightforward. We, um, we asked ourselves whether uh, the act of gathering uh, news via the internet uh, per se uh, plays a role in determining uh, our opinions on uh, how the European Union has been doing in managing the current economic crisis. So therefore, again, very straightforward, is there an effect of online news gathering? Are people that gather news online in any way different from people that don't? And our second hypothesis relies more on this uh, structural element of the internet, the, the, the potential for uh, maximizing selective exposure. So people that are uh, europhiliac, uh, are, are they more likely to become even more uh, uh, positive in their evaluation of the European Union uh, during the current economic crisis? And people that are particularly eurosceptics, will they become even more negative towards uh, the, the union. Now, as I said, we, we checked that uh, on two uh, data sets. Uh, the first one is the third wave of the Irish National Election Study, uh, 2011. And again, here we have a, a large set of, 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 of questions, and one of them addressed particularly how would you evaluate uh, the um, European Union in this time of crisis, and, and i read you the question in a second. The second one is the survey that we ran for uh, the fiscal compact referendum. And in there, we asked very specific questions on patterns uh, of online behavior. Uh, we, we were able to ask whether people had uh, looked uh, on the internet at large, if they had um, visited the website of the Referendum Commission, which we consider a politically neutral website, just exposed plain information on the uh, issue at stake without taking any sides, uh, blogs and fora, where on the other hand we would expect maximization of opinions and, and quite a lot of, of extreme opinions, and from browsing the, the content of those platforms, very much negative opinion uh, on the EU. And what these two surveys uh, had in common is uh, that they both contained uh, an element that allowed us to geolocate respondents. So we had at our disposal a very uh, precise uh, geographical data of on where respondents were located, where, where their, their household uh, was. 
And with this information, we were able to map at the time in, 20, in 2011 and 2012 whether respondents were living in an area covered by a fast internet signal or not. Um, and that was uh, what we used uh, our instrument. So in terms of measures, um, the dependent variable, again, was this question that read in the past few years the economy has been in recession. How responsible, if at all, is the European Union for the poor economic condition of the past two years? The treatment, uh, we, again, we have more detailed information on uh, uh, how many times people access the internet, but in, 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 in order to simplify things, we code it in binary terms. Have you uh, browsed the, the web for politically relevant information? And it's coded, yes, if respondents did so at least once a week. The instrument, again, based on this mapping and extra data collection that we performed, um, was, was able to, to tell us apart areas with and without broadband coverage, which at the time uh, was still very much scattered in the country. Then we have a large set of covariates. In the paper, you can see that we first run couple of baseline models, and then we, we add a large number of controlled uh, variables. So we have socioeconomic status, we have uh, patterns of traditional media consumption, uh, political attitudes, so on and so forth. And for the, the second hypothesis, the one on reinforcement effects, uh, we uh, split the sample around attitudes towards uh, the EU uh, in general. Now, in terms of uh, what we found, I'm not going to show you any number, the tables are all in the paper, uh, but what we found was that there actually was a difference uh, among, between those that browsed the internet for politically relevant information and those who did not. And this effect went in a negative direction. So people that used the internet for political news gathering were more likely to attribute responsibility to the European Union uh, than those who did not. In terms of reinforcement effects, here uh, things got a little more complicated because we, we found that in the group that was Eurosceptic, so those that were negatively predisposed towards the EU, uh, there is a reinforcement effect, uh, but those that had positive attitudes towards the EU had experienced no significant effects uh, in browsing the internet for political news. So, partial effect for our second hypothesis, still a bit to understand things. And uh, what we, we thought we could have understood things a little bit better in the wake of uh, the fiscal compact referendum um, by looking at those who only browse for uh, only gather politically relevant news via blogs and fora, where we expected the, the maximization of negativity to be found. Um, and here, unfortunately, we, we could only rely on a very low number of cases that gather information only via these sites, uh, and uh, therefore we, we talk of only suggestive evidence, because uh, in terms of computation, things got a little complex. Uh, therefore, we had to go for an econometric strategy much, uh, much simplified. But what we found is that people that actually only browse the web uh, to visit blogs and fora were more likely to reject uh, the fiscal compact referendum. So the negativity was sort of um, confirmed. In the same way, people who only browsed uh, the internet for information on the referendum by looking at the Referendum Commission website, so a politically neutral website, website were less likely to vote uh, no. And that gives us a hint on the fact that content matters, uh, but again, we, we don't really um, have strong, um, a large enough group in order to, to, to build so much more. Uh, what we sort of asked ourselves is, why is that negativity is amplified on the, on the web? Why is that we find a negative impact of browsing the web on opinions and uh, behavior? We believe that in a way, and that comes also from the, the literature on negative uh, campaigns, negative messages just, just make an impact. They, they have much stronger, uh, they stick into, into people's minds. 
way more than positive uh, messages. And the other uh, reason is that the crisis, <coughs> and we have heard this before, is very complex in its origin. Uh, people have, uh, have, to, have, have uh, a hard time in metabolizing and deciding who is responsible for what. Uh, and there are different levels of governance. Therefore, we believe that finding a negative effect is very much in line uh, with these sets of reasons. And to wrap it up, we found that there is a causal link between uh, using the internet as such. Uh, we find partial support for reinforcement effects. Uh, and we, we have, uh, let's say, um, not uh, rock solid evidence, but uh, we are pretty much convinced that content matters and possibly this has to be addressed with a proper experiment. And thanks.